Now, the last time we saw we had a slight problem because we had that um, <clears throat> on disks, you saw that uh, the first partition was an EFI system. And I plan on building the LFS. I'll just throw it on one of these uh, partitions here that are empty. These two are empty. So, um, I looked in the general facts. How do I boot LFS with UEFI? And it links to this, Grub 2.06 for EFI. The Grub package provides Grand Unified Bootloader. In this page, it will be built with UEFI support, which is not enabled for Grub built in LFS. This package is known to build and work properly using an LFS 11.1 .1 platform which is what we're using right now. You see we're in 11.1. .1. Download uh, the Grub Tarball. So actually, um, let's set up in downloads. I'm going to set up something for my LFS Tarballs. that I want to collect. Oh, I should check the MD5 sum. Um, mm, so LS CD um, Downloads, uh, CD downloads, and uh, we made an LFS folder, and um, let's see, I know Command line find MD five sum. So let's see MD five sum. So that's what I thought it was, but MD five sum grub. So the The sum here, CF zero FD nine two eight B one nine two eight B one E five set four seven nine C eight one zero eight E E five two C B one one four three six three. So it checks. Additional downloads Unicode font data used to display grub menu. Whatever this is, PCF.gz. So now if I LS, we can do um, MD5 SUM space. And then the file name is unifont. And we compare to what's here, 8191CA4FCE0EB6073D47C, 
7573E6 BABC1, okay? GC only needed if building on 32-bit. Nope. Um, grub dependencies. So you, we needed the Unicom font, font data used to display the grub menu. Required runtime, EFI boot manager. Well, we already have the EFI section. Free type 2.11. LVM2-2.03.15. Actually, I don't need the grub uh, because that's installed on this system and I was going to use that. So I'll link this page, though, for those of you will use the using grub to set up the boot process with UEFI. That would be here. Um, I'll link that in this and come back to that later. All right, 2.5, creating a file system on the partition. Now that a blank partition has been set up, you saw that I have those uh, blank partitions. Uh, I did that when I installed the Ubuntu system on this drive. The file system can be created. LFS can use any file system recognized by the Linux kernel, but the most common types are ext3 and ext4. The choice of file system can be complex and depends on the characteristics of the files and the size of the partition, for example. ext2 is suitable for small partitions that are updated infrequently, such as boot. ext3 is an upgrade to ext2 that includes a journal to help recover the partition status in the case of an unclean shutdown. It is commonly used as a general purpose file system. EXT4 is the latest version of the EXT file system family of partition types. It provides several new capabilities including nanosecond time stamp stamps, creation and use of very large files, 16 terabyte, and speed improvements. Other file systems, including FAT32, NTFS, RiserFS, JFS, and XFS, are used for specialized purposes. What about ButterFS? Um, more import Im information about these file systems can be found at Wikipedia Comparison of File Systems. LFS assumes that the root file system is of type ext4. To create an ext4 file system on the LFS partition, run the following. mkfs-v-t ext4 slash dev slash where after the dev, you put the name of the LFS partition. We already have a partition formatted as ext4. If you are using an existing swap partition, there is no need to format it. If a new swap partition was created, it will need to be initialized with this command, mkswap space slash dev slash the name of the swap partition, sd or sc, whatever. In our case, it's sdc6. Our ext4 is sdc2. All right, setting up the LFS variable. Throughout this book, the environment variable LFS will be used several times. You should ensure that this variable is always defined throughout the LFS build process. It should be set to the name of the directory where you will be building your LFS system. We will use MNT slash LFS as an example. But the directory choice is up to you. If you're building LFS on a separate partition, this directory will be the mount point for the partition. Choose a directory location and set the variable with the following command. 
All right, so. Having this variable set is beneficial in that commands such as make directory dash v lfs tools can be typed literally. The shell will automatically replace lfs with mount lfs or with whatever variable was set to when it processes the command line. Okay, so we're going to use sd first cd tilde. Now I'm going to export mount slash and we're going to mount sdc2 I believe. Let's let's verify this. Um disks <clears throat> like I have to verify stuff a thousand times. So uh SDC2. And we're going to set LFS equal to mount SDC2. So export LFS equals mount SDC2. Having this variable set is beneficial in that commands such as make directory dash V LFS tools can be typed literally. The shell will automatically replace LFS with mount LFS or whatever the variable was set to when it processes the command line. Do not forget to check that LFS is set whenever you leave and re-enter the current working environment, such as when doing a SU to root or another user. Check that the LFS variable is set up properly with echo echo um, string L or dollar sign LFS. And ours is set to mount SDC2. Should I have dev SDC2 there? Let's look at the manual for the mount command. I mean, um, Give me a minute. Let's uh, check the root folder. CDMNT LS. Um. Mm, I don't know. No expert with mount. Make sure the output shows the path to your LFS systems build location, which is mount LFS if the provided example was followed. If the output is incorrect, use the command given earlier in this page to set LFS to the correct directory name. All right, let me pause this a second. One way to ensure that the LFS variable is always set to edit the dot bash underscore profile file in both your personal home directory and in root dot bash underscore profile and enter the export can command above. That's the export LFS equals mount forward slash LFS. 
Um, in addition, the shell specified in the ETC password file for all users that need the LFS variable needs to be bash to ensure that the root .bash profile file is incorporated as part of the login process. The bash profile in both personal and in root and enter the export command above. The shell specified in the password for all users need the LFS variable needs to be bash to ensure files incorporated. Another consideration is the method that is used to log into the host system. If logging in through a graphical display manager, the user's bash profile is not normally used when a virtual terminal is started. In this case, add the export command to the .bash RC file for the user and root. In addition, some distributions have instructions to not run the .bash RC instructions in a non-interactive bash invocation. Be sure to add the export command before the test for non-interactive use. So right now I'm not sure what that's saying. So eventually we'll have to figure that out. Um, let's go to the next section. Mounting the new partition. Now that a file system has been created, the partition needs to be made accessible. In order to do this, the partition needs to be mounted at a chosen mount point. For the purposes of this book, it is assumed that the file system is mounted under the directory specified by the LFS environment variable as described in the previous section. Create the mount point and mount the LFS file system by running. Okay, so... MKDIR make directory. What's the dash PV first? So man MKDIR. Now he has P and V here. P for parents. Make parent directories as needed. Print a message for each created directory okay mk dir dash pv uh, the dollar sign the string symbol lfs Missing operand. Let's let's go back one. Let's try export. LFS equals MNT. Let's try dev SDC two. Echo LFS. Now let's try MK DIR dash PV dollar sign LFS. 
All right, now let's sudo mkdir dash pv dollar sign lfs. Okay, I'm hoping that was the right move. Now the next thing is create the mount point and then mount the LFS system by mount. Actually, uh, let's do the man for mount real quick. They have dash V dash T. Mm. This manual page is long enough. Uh, dash V dash T for the mouth. Okay, dash T specifies an alternative fstab file. If path is a directory, then the files in the directory are sorted by strverscmp. Files that start with dot or with a dot fstab extension are ignored. The option can be specified more than once. This option is mostly designed for intra MFS or chroot scripts where additional configuration is specified beyond standard system configuration. Um, note that mount 8 does not pass the option fstab to the spin mount type helpers, meaning that the alternative fstab files will be invisible for the helpers. This is no problem for normal mounts. But user non-root mounts always require fstab to verify the user's rights. Dash t, so dash, um, oh, that was the wrong one. Dash lowered case t is fs type. I shouldn't have read that. The argument following the dash t is used to indicate the file system type. In this case, it's ext4, which are currently supported on the running kernel. For a complete list, the most common are the ext, xfs, btrf, s, vfat, sysfs, proc, nfs, and cifs. The programs mount and u mount support file system types. The subtype is defined as a subtype suffix. If no dash t is given or if the auto type is specified, mount will try to guess the desired type. All right, what about dash V, verbose mode? All right, so mount dash V dash T ext4, although we know the whole thing's ext4, slash dev slash well I'm assuming SDC2 is what they want and dollar sign LFS okay we need to put sudo in there Replace with the designation of the LFS partition. Okay. If using multiple partitions for LFS, 
e.g. one for the um, slash root and another for home, mount them using um, this. I'm not using multiple partitions. Ensure that this new partition is not mounted with permissions that are too restrictive, such as the NOSUID or no dev options. Run the mount command without any parameters to see what options are set for the mounted LFS partition. If no NOSUID and or no dev are set, the partition will need to be remounted. So what if I type mount? Here's SDC2, RW, Relatime. See it down here? Do we see, we don't see NOS UID or NODEV options for SD2, do you? No dev NOS UID on this one here. Okay, I think there's a problem. So the above instructions assume that you will not be restarting your computer throughout the LFS process. If you shut down your system, you will either need to remount the LFS partition each time you start the build process or modify your host systems etc fstab file automatically remounted upon boot. For example, this. If you use additional optional partitions, be sure to add them also. If you're using a swap partition, ensure that it is enabled using the swap on command. Um, now that there is an established place to work, it is time to download the packages. So I'm going to have to look into what I'm doing at this stage.